What's up, not just developers? Welcome back to a new live stream. Today, today we're gonna build the Apple Wallet in React Native using React Native Reanimated and React Native Gesture Handler. And instead of talking, let me actually show you a quick demo of what exactly we're gonna build. So here is the end result that you're gonna achieve by following this tutorial. We are rendering a list of cards similar to how Apple Wallet is doing. And we are uh, actually implementing our own version of scrolling through these items. And as you can see, we also have some special effects on the scrolling as the cards are stacking on top of each other at the top as we are scrolling. Another interesting animation that we're gonna work on today is the animation when we select one of these cards. Whenever that happens, the card pops up at the top and the rest of them are governing here on the bottom. And when we deselect, everything moves back to the normal. And everything works with maintaining the same scroll position. So when we go back, we are at the same place. Everything works very smooth on both iOS and Android with 60 frames per second. So very excited to uh, build this application together with you. And as you can see, the application is highly focused on animations and that's exactly going to be the focus of today's tutorial. For that, we're gonna use React Native Reanimated to power our animations and React Native Gesture Handler to uh, respond to the gestures that the user are doing, swiping, tapping, and so on. These two libraries are very important part of a React Native of building interactive applications in React Native. They are built by Software Mansion. And actually, if you want to learn more about this, I would like to invite you to this year's edition of App.js conference. This conference is also organized by Software Mansion and it's happening in Krakow in Poland uh, from 22nd to 24th May. So um, it's three days uh, event. We're at more than 26 speakers, a lot of attendees. So if you want to connect with the community, this is the right place. I've been there the last two years and I really enjoyed. And this year there are even better speakers from which you can learn. There are also workshops. Uh, most of them are already sold out, but there are two of them that are really interesting and there are a couple of spots left. Uh, this is the accelerated development and distribution uh, workflows with Expo and the one that most probably uh, you will get a lot of value out of is the Expo Router Workshop. Make sure to check out the, uh, the page of a conference going at app.js.co and you can use the promo code not just devs 10 for 10% discount at checkout. And with that, I'm gonna probably see you at app.js because I'm also gonna be there and I'm actually going to celebrate my birthday during this uh, event. So let's meet, let's catch up there and now back to the video. Thank you very much Software Mansion for sponsoring this video and let's get started. All right, so uh, we're gonna start everything from scratch. So let me go ahead and close everything here and let's start together by initializing a new Expo project. I'm gonna open up a terminal. I'm gonna navigate here to the place where I keep my projects. And here, let's go ahead and initialize the Expo project using npx and using the create expo application uh, by running npx create expo app at latest and we, we can call it wallet app. Let's go ahead and press enter and this will initialize an empty and blank expo project from where we can get started. All the libraries are working out of the box in expo so we can continue working with Expo Go throughout the whole tutorial that we're gonna do today. Really like the animations. You can actually use this kind of animation in a lot of applications, in a lot of finances application. So very excited about this one. But while this, our application is being uh, set up, uh, if you're new on this channel, hello, welcome here. My name is Vadim and on this channel, my mission is to help you build impactful mobile applications. 
We have a lot of project-based tutorials similar to this one or even bigger projects where we take something from scratch and build all the way till production together with the front end and back end. So if you're interested in that, if you want to learn and master mobile development with React Native and all the tools around it, make sure to subscribe to the channel. That would help us a lot. And uh, yeah, welcome, welcome to the channel. Um, yes, uh, now the project is actually finished initializing. So I'm gonna open it up in Visual Studio Code, wallet up. This will open the Visual Studio Code or you can use any editor of your choice perfectly fine. And before we actually start the application, what I like to do is I'd like to switch from JavaScript to TypeScript. Uh, you don't have to do that. This is really optional. I'm not even sure that we're gonna use any TypeScript today, but this is a, um, something that I follow in most of the tutorials. To do that, I will simply rename the app.js file to app.tsx. And in the next step, we are going to open a terminal. Let's open a Visual Studio Terminal inside our project. And here, let's run npm start. npm start will execute expo start. And then expo will detect that we have a TypeScript file, but we don't have yet TypeScript configured. So what it will do is it will ask us to, uh, if we want to install and configure TypeScript. Let's just press enter and expo will take care of everything for ourselves, Installing TypeScript, other packages and configuring it here. So now our application is a TypeScript application. And when we see this menu, that means that our application is ready for us to get started and working on. The easiest way to uh, start working on this application uh, would be to download the Expo Go application on your physical device from App Store or Google Play, and then simply scan this QR code. That's the simplest one because in that case, you don't need any Android Studio or Xcode on your machine. Uh, so you can just get up and running really, really fast. In my case, I have an iOS simulator and also Android sim emulator. Uh, so I'm gonna press I here in this terminal to run it on my iOS simulator. You, you can follow this tutorial both for, with Android and iOS and at the end, I'm gonna test to make sure that it works perfectly for both of them. And after I press I, it opens here on the side in my emulator. We see open up .js to start working on your application and we can do that here. If I open this file, we're gonna see the entry point of our application. From here, I can simply start with a hello world, save, make sure that everything reloads and refresh uh, automatically on our device. And that means that we are ready to get started. Uh, hello everyone who is joining us live. How are you doing guys? Are you excited about this tutorial? Hello Rogelio. Hello Kamal. Hello Gweep. <laughs> Yesli is asking when will you release the new course? I'm ready to pay. I'm very happy to hear that. Uh, however, we're still working very hard on that. We're gonna have a waiting list up and running, hopefully in one week, and then you can join the wait list, and probably in a couple of months, we're gonna have a first version when, when you will be able to join the course. Um, it takes a lot of time to build a really high quality course because these are not like YouTube videos where I improvise in a lot of cases. This is something that I prepare a lot, I do a lot of research, I make sure that all the projects that we build in the course are kind of built on top of each other so that you can learn really in depth everything about React Native and Expo uh, without like spanning like 100 hours or something like that. I want to help you in the fastest way possible to master React Native development with modern tools. So yeah, that's, that's our upcoming course. It's, it's coming soon. Uh, and when I will have more information, I'm gonna let you know, but thank you for asking. Uh, okay, guys, let me uh, ask a question in the chat and I will stop from time to time to answer them. And uh, let's actually go back and continue the tutorial. 
Uh, before we actually get started and write any code, one second, I want to sneeze. Oh, come on. <coughs> okay, sorry. Um, before we get started, there are a couple of assets that I prepare for you uh, that you can download following this URL. You can find this URL also in the description below. And after you download this, uh, you're gonna get here, you'll download the asset bundle. And in the asset bundle, let me also find it, we will find some, where is it? Here is the asset bundle. So inside this asset bundle, you will find uh, some uh, assets, the presentation and the source code at the end, I'm gonna include it here as well. What I'm interested in is in the cards images and that's going to be the first step that we're gonna do. So let's go ahead and drag and drop these cards uh, folder in our assets directory inside React Native. So I'm gonna do it like this. So under assets, I have cards and all the cards are PNGs that we can see here so we can work with them. Okay, perfect. Now, um, what I'm gonna do next is I will want to render these cards on the screen. But I don't want to do everything in the app.ts file. I want to separate them in separate files uh, so that it's going to be very easier for us to manage and work on the application. So let's go ahead and set up quickly the structure of our project. I like to create a source folder where I keep all the source, uh, all the source code. And inside the source directory, let's go ahead and create a folder called components and a folder called, I'm not even, um, it's supposed to be a folder for screens, but probably I'm gonna do them right away in the components, not to have a lot of things. So for now, a folder with components is enough and the first component that we are going to build is going to be the list of cards. So let's go ahead and inside the components folder, create a new file called cards list.tsx. Now here we're gonna create uh, our first custom component. The custom component in React is a simple function. Let's call it the same name as the file cards list. Um, I'm going to define it as an arrow function. You can also do it with normal function. And what makes this a component is uh, we have to return something to render on the screen. Things to render on the screen we can import from React. So we can start with a text uh, from React Native actually. And let's go ahead and render a text here, cards list. This is going to allow us just to see if everything is connected and then we're gonna work on rendering the actual cards. The last step in this file is to go ahead and export uh, this component cards list from this file so that we can go into app.tsx, import this component, let's import cards list from source component cards list. And instead of this text, I'm gonna delete the text completely Let's go ahead and render our custom component called cards list. If I do that, I should see on the screen cards list text. That means that our uh, custom component that we created here is rendering correctly. <clears throat> um, okay, now let's go ahead and actually render our cards. So I'm going to import a view and an image component because this image component is going to help us to render our card images. Uh, instead of a text, I'm gonna actually remove it. I'm gonna open the brackets and start with a view because that's where we will keep our list of cards. And then inside this view, we're gonna render the actual cards. But first we need to import all of these images and I'm gonna import them here at the top by defining an array of cards. This is going to be an array. And for each item, I'm going to import the image using require and then the relative path from where we are here in the components folder. 
I need to go back one time into the source folder. Then I need to go one more time into the root folder. And after that, I'm gonna go into the assets, then cards. Then here, I'm going to choose the card1.png, card1.png. Okay, so that's our first card and I can do the same for all the rest of the cards by simply copy pasting it nine times. We have nine cards and changing the digit of a card like this. Have one more extra, let's remove it. So now we have an array with nine images. Um, before we render all the images, let's try to render at least one image. So I'm going to I'm going to go here inside our view and let's start by rendering the image component that we imported from React Native. Now inside the image component, we can give a source which uh, expects an image, and we're going to give it our cards at position zero to take the first image from this array. If I say this, we should already see something. Um, but uh, the, the image is quite large. Uh, and what I'm going to do is, let's go ahead and provide some styles to this image. What I want to do is I want to make sure that the width of this image is 100%. The problem right now is that the image completely disappeared and I can test if the problem is with height by setting up custom height here like 200. But in fact, it's not about the problem. The problem is not with the height. The problem is actually on our app.tsx uh, that aligns and justify contour on the center. Let's remove these two from here. And now our card should be displayed at the top of the screen with 100% uh, width. While actually I was at here in app.tsx, let's do a couple of small changes here that will, we can do and forget about them. One of these changes is I would like to change the background color to black like this. And the second change that I want to do is I want to make sure that the content of our application is not displayed behind the uh, behind the notch, so that's called unsafe area. Uh, to, to fix that, we're gonna import a component called safe area view from React Native, and I'm gonna simply replace our root view in app.js and app.ts with a safe area view. Now that will make sure that our image is displayed below the notch. And now we kinda lost uh, all the um, status bar icons at the top, uh, and that's because here in status bar, instead of auto, we can set it to light and now they are displayed with white. So now in app.tsx, everything is correct. I can remove these two imports to keep it clean and let's go back to our cards list. <coughs> Okay, so um, let's talk a little bit about the sizing of this image. At the moment, I said that the width of this image should be 100%. Uh, that's fine, but how do we calculate the height? At the moment, we hard-coded it, but what we actually want to do is the height, we want the height to depend on the width. So if the screen is larger, both the width and the height is going to be larger. So we want a relative sizing and that can be accomplished by setting aspect ratio. For example, one over one, that will make a square as we can see here. Uh, actually the aspect ratio that I want, we're gonna take it from by looking at the aspect ratio of this image. If we look here at the bottom, we see that it's 700 pixels by 400 pixels. So that means that the aspect ratio is 700 over 400 or seven over four. It's doing something, but the problem is that now it messed up the width. Uh, with remote images, this, are, this syntax is working perfectly fine, but with local images, what we should do to fix this issue is we need to set the, uh, the height of the image to undefined. 
that's a little like uh, probably it's a bug because I would expect like if we don't provide the aspect ratio for it to also work, but in this case it messes up. Uh, it keeps the aspect ratio, but it uh, enlarges the width. So I need to uh, hard code height with undefined, and then by providing the aspect ratio, our height is going to be calculated based on the width using this aspect ratio. And this way, our card is actually displayed correctly. And if I'm gonna add, I don't know, a background color red here, we're gonna see that the box in which it renders is exactly the size of the image. That's what we want. Okay, perfect. So now we render one image, we styled it, we sized it. Now let's go ahead and render a list of images. So we have an array of cards and for every single card here, I want to render one of these images. So in JavaScript or in React Native, what we can do for in this case where we have an array of things and we want to render an array of elements on the screen, the easiest way to do that is using a dot map operation. So I'm gonna start by opening the curly brackets. I'm gonna use the cards array and let's do cards.map. So we are going to map over all the cards in the array and for every card, we are going to return an image like this. And if we do that, now we see a list of images. Uh, the thing is that now the source or the image itself that we want to render should be the card or better called card image. And if we replace the source with card, we see that all the images are different. One well, thing to remember is that whenever we are doing this mapping, we should also give here a key uh, for React to be able to properly uh, optimize our list. In our case, um, we don't have any identifiers for our cards. In a real scenario, you would have like some kind of an ID. But for this demo, we only have images. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually take the index of the element that we're currently rendering and I'm gonna use it for the key. Just like that, it should be fixed and we should also get rid of a, of a key um, warning. Um, let's go ahead and add some maybe margin vertical to this uh, image and we're gonna do five and that will add some spacing around them and 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 the next thing is what maybe to the whole view we can give it a style and add a padding 10 to also have some spacing around on the left and the right okay so that's our list at the moment we cannot scroll yet you might think that to make it scrollable, we can replace this view with a scroll view, or you might ask why then we simply put this, um, render this using a flat list. Well, we render it this way because in this way, we're gonna have much more control of how the scroll is working. And we need that in order for us to have like really control over like where the elements are positioned. Like for example, when we select a card, we want the car to go on the top, the rest of them to go to the bottom. So it's going to be a lot of uh, work with the scroll position, with translation. So I think it's going to be easier if we actually will manage the scrolling ourselves. So that's why I don't have anything here. Our application is not scrollable yet, but that's going to be the next step. Now that we have it uh, this way, let me go ahead and... Uh, committed, git add, git commit, render list of cards. Uh, okay.
yeah, I think we can move on. And now we are going to start working with reanimated and gesture handler. Because as I said, our next step is going to be to implement the, to make this list scrollable. And we're gonna do it ourselves in do it yourself way. Uh, and for that, we're gonna need the library gesture handler to detect when the user is dragging over the, this list. And we're gonna need reanimated to make sure to smoothly uh, move the uh, elements on the UI, on, on the UI to move them up and down. So let's go ahead and go ahead and install these two libraries. Let's start with gesture handler. I'm gonna search for gesture handler. Should be this one. It's the latest version. And let's go into the installation guide. To, yeah, basically to install it, I'm gonna just grab the name React Native, no, React Native Gesture Handler. Come on. And let's go ahead in the terminal and install it using npx install React Native Gesture Handler. Like this. Let's press enter. And while this is installing, npx, npx expo install, I forgot about that. npx expo install React Native Gesture Handler. And while this is installing, I'm gonna go back into the documentation and check the next steps that we have to do. So what we have to do is we have to wrap our whole application in this gesture handler root view inside our app.tsx. So let's just do that. Let's open app.tsx. Let's import here gesture handler root view from React Native Gesture Handler. And let's wrap our whole application in this gesture handler root view. And usually what we also should do is we need to give it a style and a flex one to make sure that this view will take the whole amount of space on the screen. So now everything is working as it was working before. We have a difference that now we are going to be able to handle the gestures. That's gonna come in a moment, but uh, now let's go ahead and also install and set up uh, React Native Reanimated. So let's search React Native Reanimated. Let's go ahead and open up the documentation of React Native Reanimated and press get started. To install, we're gonna do npx expo install React Native Reanimated. So let's go ahead in the terminal Using Expo, we're gonna install React Native Reanimated. And as I, as I said before, both of these libraries are part of the, um, of the Expo uh, SDK and they are available in uh, Expo Go. So we don't have to do anything extra. Let's follow the instruction guides uh, for setting up Reanimated. And what we have to do is we have to set this reanimated plugin in babel.config. So let's open the files. We're gonna find here babel config. I don't have plugins yet, so I'm gonna paste plugins and the React Native reanimated plugin here. If you have already some plugins, make sure that you add the reanimated as the last one in the list. And with that, we are ready to restart our application and we need to restart our server and make sure to clear the cache. For that, I'm gonna go back to where my expo is running. I'm gonna stop it by pressing Command or Control C. And I'm gonna run it with npm start. Then I'm gonna do dash dash space dash dash clear. This way we are sending with clear flag towards expo start. And this will also clear the bundler cache, meaning that everything is going to be um, fresh, <laughs> let's say. Let's run it again on iOS by pressing I. And if our application is running, which hopefully it will, 
then we have successfully installed gesture handler and reanimated. Yes, here we have them. So now we can go ahead into the cards list and start working on making this list scrollable. I think I'm too zoomed in or no. It's good. Hopefully it's going to be good. So um, first step, the first step is to detect gestures. We want to make to detect when the user is uh, dragging on the screen or this, um, this gesture is also called panning, when the, there is a pan gesture. For that, we need two things, a gesture detector. So let's import a, a gesture detector and the gesture from React Native Gesture Handler. First, we need to define our configuration for the gesture. So let's define this as, in our cards list, as pan equal gesture dot pan. And later we're going to provide more configuration here. For now, we simply uh, created this pan gesture. We're not handling anything yet. Now we need to, uh, to wrap the area or the component that where we want to handle these gestures. In our case, that's going to be our whole um, list. So that's why I'm going to wrap the whole view into a gesture detector. I'm gonna close it at the end. And the gesture that we are going to detect is going to be this pan gesture that we define here. Now, nothing is happening yet, but now we can set up and configure different configuration on this gesture and different callbacks. Callback functions that uh, will be called whenever something happens. For example, if we have a on start, uh, on start and we provide here a callback and inside the callback we say console log panning started and here we need to close it and after that we can chain multiple uh, callbacks for example another event is going to be on uh, change and this is going to be called every time we are moving and our uh, finger like changes like the position of the finger changes on the screen let's do here console log panning and then I'm going to add one more uh, event here on end. And this is going to be called whenever the gesture ends. So let's do console log, panning, end it. Now let's go ahead and open the terminal, clear it, and go ahead and try to press and start dragging and release. As we can see, we have panning started. And after that, as we moved our mouse on the screen, it's panning, panning, panning. And at the end, we have also the panning ended. Not only do we know like these events, we can also get some information about what's happening. For example, in the on change, we can take the event and we can also console log, for example, the, uh, what we are actually interested in is how much did we, uh, did we swipe up or down? because that our scroll um, list is going to be a vertical scroll list. So the only thing we're interested in right now is the how much scrolled on Y. Let's console log the event dot. And here you're gonna see a lot of properties that the event has. The absolute X and Y, how much it changed the state, how much it translated, the velocity and so on. What I'm interested here is in the change Y. How much did we scroll up and down? How much did our pen change from the previous time it was called? Not from the beginning of the gesture, but from the previous time the on change was called. So if I open up the terminal now and start panning, we see that as I move up, we are scrolling with around like five pixels or three pixels we're moving up. If I scroll down, we're gonna see that the values have positive value. 
So just like that, we know like how much it changed. But as I said, there is a lot of things you can have in this event. And for more information, make sure to go to the reanimated or no, to the gesture handler. Here we're talking about gesture handler. And look at the pun gesture. It allows you to do this kind of drag and drops. Um, in our case, we are doing like scrollable and we only handle like the Y translation, like up and down, but you can do also drag and drop as well. And you're gonna see like all of the things here. You can configure a lot of things. And if you look at the callbacks, here you're gonna see on begin, on start, on end, on finalize, and a lot of more other events that you can hook in and execute something. There is the callbacks uh, when we are actually dragging, there are two callbacks. The on update, this is going to be called every time the gesture receives an update and the on change that we are using, which is the callback. Um, it's the same on change. The only difference is that it has information about the change in the value in relation to the last received event. So it's basically, besides the information that the update is giving, it's also giving us information how much did the, did, did the, how, how to call it, the gesture changed on the, on the screen. So, perfect. So knowing, knowing this information, as you can imagine, we can power a scroll, a scroll view. Uh, for that, we're gonna have to keep track of a value of how much we scrolled. And every time we are panning on the screen, we're going to update that scroll value with this change Y um, translation. And then using that scroll value, we're gonna move our cards up and down uh, depending on it. So now we are moving into the reanimated part. So probably I'm going to do a git add. And now we're going to start working with reanimated. The first thing that we need from reanimated is going to be to, uh, we're gonna have to keep track of the scroll position. The scroll position um, cannot be a state, uh, a React state variable, because the state is used to re-render our component. In our case, our scroll position will change so often, often that it will be very inefficient to re-render our component every time it changes. So for that reason, we need to execute or keep track of this scroll position, not on our usual JavaScript thread that is handling our rendering lifecycle, but on the UI thread, which is uh, handling the rendering part, the UI part. To do that, that's called a shared value uh, from <coughs> shared value from React Native reanimated. So a shared value is, let's say, quite similar to a state variable. However, this value is, um, is stored on the UI thread and it's perfect for running animation, for running, uh, yeah, UI animations. So let's define it as uh, scroll Y. How do they call it? Yeah, the scroll Y position, and we're gonna define it as use shared value equal to zero. Now we can uh, simply update this scroll Y value uh, inside the on change by saying scroll Y dot value is equal to a new value. So updating it is even easier. We don't have to call any setters. We right away update that dot value property of our shared value. 
So what we want to do with a scroll Y when we are panning up and down is we want to um, subtract the change, like how much it changed from the current scroll value. So we're gonna take the current scroll value and subtract there the event dot change Y. And we can, uh, we can also do a console log of scroll and here let's uh, console log with scroll y dot value. I'm going to remove this console log and let's check. Uh, now we start at zero and I'm gonna, tr I'm gonna simulate that we are scrolling down by moving the finger up the screen. So we see that as we move up our scroll increases and then as we will move down, the scroll decreases. And it doesn't matter where we start because everything is relative. Like we're working with simply the change. Even if we start from the bottom or from the top and so on, it automatically keeps track. And if I will do more times to the bottom, it's gonna go really, it's going to increment. So with this scroll value minus event change. Okay, perfect. Uh, but what can we do with this scroll Y? Knowing the scroll position, what we should do is we need to translate this image. A translation allows us to move an element on the screen and is defined on the style using a transform. And then we need an array with an object where we put the translate Y. So if we translate all the items 100 pixels to the top, they will all together move to the top. If we increase it to 120, 30 and so on, you can see that they move to the top. In the other way around, if we have a positive value, they will move to the bottom. So that means that we can actually go ahead and use the, <coughs> the scroll Y position here, scroll Y value. Uh, scroll Y, but in order to use the scroll Y, which is a shared value, which runs on the UI thread, our component that is using this value to style for the styling should be an animated component. So the only thing that we should do is we're going to import from React Native Reanimated the animated library, and there we already have some default animated components such as animated, oh come on, animated dot image. And just like that, now this image is, uh, we are being able to animate it using shared values in directly inside the style. So now if I'm gonna start scrolling up, all the cards are moving down and if I will do up, they are moving up. So it's a bit, it should be the other way around, it should be inverted. Um, one way to do it is instead of doing minus here to do plus, and in that case it will work correctly. But this way is not actually mm, logically correct because the scroll Y, like as we move down, it should be a positive value. But in now, now the scroll Y, if we look in the logs, is a negative value. So it's a bit uh, counterintuitive. So I'm gonna actually leave it to minus one, minus event.change in order to have, in order to have positive values when we scroll down. And the only thing that I will have to do is when using it here, I'm going to reverse it. I cannot do it right away here, like minus scroll y, because this is a shared value. I cannot even do minus scroll y dot value because now it's not animated. We could use a, um, we could use a, <coughs> how it's called, the use animated styles on this component. And in that situation, we would be able to apply any, any changes to this shared value. Uh, that would be an option. Another option would be to create a derived variable, a derived value based on the scroll Y that is simply the, um, 
uh, that we simply like uh, a value with opposite sign compared to the scroll y. Uh, but in fact, what I'm actually going to do because we're gonna actually need this a little bit more control over this translate y a bit later. So let's right away do this together. What I want to do is I want to create a separate component for this card component and there we're gonna manage how we can transform from the scroll Y to our translate Y. So um, let's go ahead and start by creating a, cust a separate component in our components folder called card.tsx. Here I'm going to do const card equal something, then we're going to return and what we are going to return is this animated image because at the moment our card is a simple animated image. Now in the card, let's make sure to import animated from React Native. We are going to need index. The index and the card image, let's call it, and the index we're gonna receive pro properties of our component. Um, I rename it to card image or maybe we can do simply card here. And what else? The scroll Y is not defined here. So the scroll Y is another thing that we are going to receive through properties. Now that we separated everything into custom component, let's go ahead and export this card. Export default card from here so that we can import it in our card list. At the top, I'm going to import card from dot card and I'm going to render it here like this card and we need to send some properties here one of them is the card itself which is actually the image then we also need the index to know which uh, position in the list it has is going to be important in a lot of our animation in a moment. And the scroll Y, because the card know, needs to know how much it, the whole list is scrolled so that it knows how much to translate it up or down. So let's send there the scroll Y. Scroll Y, okay. So now that we have scroll Y here, if I reload the application, what's going on? reading from the value directly, directly on the UI thread. Animated, scroll Y. I need a, mm -hmm. <laughs> scroll Y is shared value. Scroll Y. What am I reading on the, oh. And animated not from React Native, <laughs> that's the mistake. We need to import animated from React Native reanimated. Now everything works. It's still like in the opposite direction, but we're gonna change it in a shortly. Um, actually, let me show you how you can do it with a derived value and later we're gonna change it to a shared value. So our translate Y uh, can be defined as a derived value which is quite similar to a shared value, but a derived value cannot be changed. A derived value is calculated based on our shared values. So let's call it translate y is equal to use derived value. And here we simply define a function and we return the value that we want to derive. derive. So in our case, that's gonna be scroll y dot value and only with a minus sign in front, or you can multiply it by minus one. And now we can take this derived value, use it in our styles, and the scroll direction will be uh, correct now. Perfect. Um, yes, so everything is good so far that a derived value is basically, yeah, 
we derived a new shared value based on our shared values. But the thing is that now we cannot go ahead and do translate.value equal to something. It's not allowed to reassign. It's only recalculated. Why are you always doing mobile apps and not web application? Is this more profitable? Um, well, everyone is using my mobile phone every day, all day. So I think there is a bigger market with mobile applications. That's why I decided to focus on mobile applications. Hello, John. How are you doing? Hello, Lokesh. All right, so let's continue. Um, our list is scrolling really nice when we actually like scroll it, but it doesn't have any momentum. And what I mean is when I scroll up fast and release it, it stops abruptly, like very fast, instantly it stops as soon as we end, um, as soon as we end our pun gesture, it doesn't do anything more. What we want to do is whenever we end the gesture, I want the list to still continue moving and slowly slow down. This way, it's a nice effect of a list moving and slowing down. So that's how the normal list is, um, is working, how the scroll thing is working. So to do that, what we are going to do is we're gonna go ahead and on the on end callback of a pen gesture, we can get the event. And this event will also contain an, a property called velocity y. Velocity y will represent, in simple terms, the speed of our, um, of our gesture when we released it. So if I'm gonna release it slowly, it's going to be minus 1,400. If I'm gonna release it fast, it's gonna minus 5,000 thousand and in the other way as well, slow and fast. And this way, knowing the velocity of the gesture, we can go ahead and <clears throat> and um, and run. <laughs> knowing the velocity, we can go ahead and run how fast we want to slow down the movement of our um, scroll animation. So in this case, we are still going to change the scroll value and we're gonna change it mm, not instantly because if I change it instantly to something like, I don't know, event.velocity or even something else, you're gonna see that it's going to basically jump. So it jumps out of a view completely. What I want to do here is use a animation modifier from Reanimated to run a smooth animation. There are different animation modifiers and you can find them in the documentation of Reanimated. For example, a wave spring modifier will go ahead and animate something uh, with a spring-like animation. With timing is a simple time-based animation. And there is one interesting animation um, <clears throat> one interesting modifier, which is called with decay. And it's actually used for this slowing down of things. So something has speed and when we release it, it's going to simulate that it slows down slowly. So the animation decays over time and moves slower, slower, slower until it reaches the end goal. So let's go ahead and use this with decay and it actually works with velocity. <clears throat> so what we're gonna do is we're going to use here, we're gonna set the scroll y value using width decay and the velocity is going to be our event.velocity y. If now I'm going to release it, it's going the other way around. <laughs> so it should be minus. If I release it, as you can see, it moves smooth until it stops and the other way as well. 
If I do it slow, it moves slow. If I do it really fast, it really moves fast, as you can expect. So it's really a simple, like we don't have to over-engineer anything. It's just an animation um, modifier with decay, and it already powers this smooth slowing down of our scroll animation. Perfect. Um, now that our scrolling is working more or less correctly, um, the next step that I want to do and the next feature of most of this animation is being able to stop the scroll. For example, if I scroll very fast and I see what I need, I want to press on the screen and at that moment I want the animation to stop. Uh, so for example, if I scroll very fast and click, I want it to stop at that moment because I want to stop animation, maybe go back or something like that. What we can do in that situation, um, now our scroll Y is animated with this with decay, which takes a bit of time, like I know, a second or half a second for the animation to run until the end. What I want to do is when I start, is it when I start or when I begin? Yeah. Um, I'm going to use an, another uh, callback function here on begin. I'm gonna explain in a moment like what's the difference between on begin and on start. And when I begin another gesture handle later, I want to cancel all the animation on the scroll Y position in order to stop it. So to do that, I will use cancel animation function that was imported for me from React Native Animated. And we can pass here a shared value on each on which we are running animations. Currently we are running animation on our scroll Y position. So let's pass here scroll Y and this will cancel all animations that are running there uh, and make sure that the scroll Y basically stops. And just with this line of code, now if I'm gonna scroll very fast and then click again, the animation stops in order for me to take control over it in a way. Hopefully you're following along together with me and you can see how this works. And I would highly recommend for you to actually run it on a physical device because all of these animations and gestures, they are going to be much more user-friendly when you're doing this on an actual device with your, uh, in your hand. And just like that, now our uh, scroll view, basically we recreated a scroll view um, with really powerful, like, and a lot of configuration that we can get uh, into. And the difference between on begin and on start, you can read here in the documentation. Um, on start will basically be triggered even when the gesture handler is not sure what type of gesture is going to be happening. And on, where is it? On begin. So on begin, when the gesture handler starts receiving touches. And at this moment, the, the handler is not yet in an active state because we don't know yet if it will be recognized as a gesture or not. And only when it recognizes that, okay, this is going to be a pen gesture, it's, it's calling the on start. So that's why we are using on begin to make sure that we call this as soon as we touch the screen. In, in the on start, this particular like stopping the animation is not gonna work as we expect. Because usually we just tap, we are not panning at that moment. Oh, okay. Uh, hello, John. Uh, почему не используешь flat list? And in English, why are, uh, don't you use a flat list? I don't use a flat list in this situation because uh, in the next step that we're going to do, 
uh, we will need much more control over the position of our elements on the screen. For example, when I select a card, I want that card to be on the top, I want the rest to be on the bottom, and I believe it's going to be much easier for us to do uh, this ourselves this way. But I'm pretty sure you can accomplish this with a flat list as well. So there, when it comes to animations, there is no like one solution fits everything. Like you can achieve the same, same like effects in multiple ways. So yeah, if you, if you want to do it with a flat list, feel free to try it out and let me know and um, how, how, it, how it turns out. Hello, Sergey. Hello, Sifiso. Zihao. Are you using the latest version uh, of Expo? I noticed it's uh, got quite a lot of new constructs in, uh, and order for documents, not as complex though. Uh, yes, I'm using the latest SDK. At this moment, that's SDK 50. So yeah, everything is working perfectly fine. How to run on a physical device without Expo Go? Uh, without Expo Go, why don't you want Expo Go? What's the problem with Expo Go? Just trying to understand. <laughs> Igor, thank you. All right, let's continue. Um, another thing that I want to do is I want to clamp uh, our scroll positions. For example, I don't want to be able to scroll infinitely to the bottom and infinitely to the top. I want to stop when the cards reaches the top of a screen and when the cards reaches the bottom of a screen. To do that, what we're gonna do is we're going to clamp the scroll Y position whenever we are changing it. So clamping is basically defining the boundaries, like the minimum value and the maximum value. We can do that using the clamp functions from React Native Reanimated. So whenever we change the scroll Y value when we are actually scrolling, we can say that change it to this value, but make sure to clamp it. So I'm gonna do clamp uh, to the following values. Now, the first parameter of a clamp is the actual value that we want to clamp. Then we have to provide the minimum and the minimum in our case is going to be zero. We don't want to go below zero on scroll Y and maximum, it should be calculated, but I'm gonna go with 1000 for a second. Uh, just to test it out. And now if I'm going to scroll, I can scroll down, but when scrolling back up, it stops at this moment. And when scrolling down, it's also going to stop somewhere at, at 1000. <clears throat> the only problem is that now we're only clamping on the on change. So when we are actively scrolling, but if I'm gonna uh, drag and release is going to go here because this is hand happening in the on end here for the scroll value. In this situation, we... Oh, I think we can simply uh, clamp velocity. No, we don't want to clamp velocity. We want to we want to clamp the output of this decay function. We want to clamp the output of this decay function. So for that, uh, we will have to use a animation modifier similar to like with decay and similar like clamp. Put together, there is a with clamp. And with clamp is, uh, B is used to clamp the output of an animation modifier. So I'm gonna use with clamp on the one on end for the momentum scroll. And here we, what's the API here for the with clamp? It has a object configuration. It needs minimum value of zero, maximum value of 1000. And then the second parameter is the clamped animation, the actual animation that we want to run. So the actual animation is this with decay. 
So these are two different ways of clamping things. Let me actually first check if it's working. So scrolling up, I cannot. And if I drag it, it's going to scroll and stop here as fast as I can. It's not gonna go further and on top as well. So as we can see, there are two ways of clamping. In this situation, we are clamping the, a, a value, like a number. In the second situation, we're clamping an, an animation. So the output of an animation, like with decay or with timing, with spring and so on. Because when, when we change, we set right away the value. Here, we animate the value. Um, and what's up with this maximum 1000? This should be the maximum scroll position. And the maximum scroll position depends on the size of the whole cards container of all the list. Mm, before we do that, I will, I forgot to provide the key to this card as index. I moved it in another place. So now the key should be on this card and not on the animated image and I can remove it from here. Going back to cards list, as I was saying, the maximum scroll positions should depend on the size of a whole container. Uh, we can calculate the size of a whole container by, uh, by taking the, the height when the component renders and then storing it into a state variable. So let's store here uh, list height and set list height use state initially we can set it to zero and then the view that we want to measure we can measure it using the on layout which is a callback function that is being called whenever the component renders or whenever the component mounts now this event uh, contains the I'm gonna set our list height using the event dot native event and the native event has layout and the layout has height, the height with X and Y position. So this way we can basically take dynamically the size of a container without us having to calculate it or so on. So now that we are setting this list height, we can use it in the both clamps instead of 1000. I want to, to scroll maximum to the list height and here as well, maximum to the list height. Now I will reload and check if I scroll down, we should be able to scroll until, uh, yeah, actually the last list height. Uh, but probably, <laughs> It's not doing this like it allows us to scroll un until the end of the list is at the top of the screen. So that means that we will also have to take the size of a screen and adjust it accordingly. So let's go ahead and take the size of a screen using the use window dimensions. And this is a hook imported from React Native that allows us to get uh, access to the height of a screen, which I will call it height and let's call it screen height. Now, knowing the screen height, we want to allow the scroll to get to the list height minus screen height. Will that work? minus screen height. So now if I will scroll, it stops here, yep. Uh, and that's because, mm, that's probably because of the, um, how's it called, the safe area view. Maximum list height, if it's there. Yeah, look, most probably uh, the, I think is that the safe area view on our parent component is messing with uh, with us. 
if I'm gonna transform it back to a view, because we would have to take into consideration that as well. Will this now, yes, now it scrolls until the bottom here. The only thing that now the top card is not actually correctly uh, scrolled. So I will go back to safer review actually. And in this card, in this uh, card list, let's simply add manually, like, I don't know, 100 pixels here and here as well, plus 100 pixels. And just like that, we have it properly. So I think I will better store it into a variable called const max scroll y equal to this value. And I'm gonna use it in both of these cases where we clamp it. So to the top, it works perfectly. To the bottom, it works perfectly. This 100 probably you should take it like based on the sizes of the but I'm not gonna worry about that now. All right, so now our list is properly clamped to the top and the bottom, so we cannot scroll outside that. Okay, let's go ahead and make sure to do a git status, git add. Uh, git add and git commit. Scroll animation. That was our scroll animation. Isn't there a way to measure the safe area insets? Yes, there is. Uh, it's, um, I think that would be the, let me see if I have it. You could do that, use safe area insets and that is coming from React Native Safe Area Context. Basically, you need an, uh, a separate library to install called React Native Safe Area Context, and then you will be able to, with a hook, to get the insets, to take them automatically. Because my list is not gonna work properly. I mean, it's going to have a little bit more space on the bottom if it's going to run on a device without um, notches. But I'm okay with that. Uh, for you, you can, Install this library that I just showed you and already lost it. And take dynamically the inset sizes. Whew, okay, so, all uh, right. The next step is going to be the fun animation of being able to select one of these cards from the list. Oh no, I think the, the first step for us is going to be to stack together on top of each other the cards on the top. So as we scroll up, we don't want to see the cards leaving the screen. We want them to stack on top of each other. And uh, to do that, it's quite easy to achieve, I think. Um, and we're going to achieve that on the card itself, on the card component itself because we don't ha want to mess with the scroll Y, we're gonna mess around with the translate Y. The scroll position, we already figured everything out, it works properly. Now we're gonna work with the translate Y to make sure that we are clamping it at the top of the screen. <clears throat> so, clamping it on the top of the screen. So again, we're gonna work with clamping because we want this translate Y to change, but we want it to not exceed the top of the screen, to stop here. So um, 
it's a bit tricky to, uh, to, to understand everything, but I'm gonna try to make it as clear as possible. So the first thing that I'm going to do is when calculating this derived value for our translate y, let's clamp it. So let's clamp this value. And let's import clamp from React Native Reanimated. And here we need to provide the, the value like the minimum amount of translation to the top. And our minimum amount is not gonna be zero and then 1000, for example. It's gonna be the other way around. It's gonna be here a negative value because items are moving to the top and they get negative translation as they are being scrolled from their initial position. And the maximum value is going to be one. So I'm not sure what's gonna happen right now, but probably nothing. If I will change here to minus 100, what that will do is it will allow the items to only be scrolled 100 pixels. Um, let's think about how do we want to clamp, how much should we allow every item to be translated up? Think about the initial position of the, of the items. The top card, let's say has a position zero. The next, and if the height of one of these cards is 200, maybe I can uh, draw something to make it a bit easier. So this is our list. Uh, this is our list and we're gonna have the first item. We're gonna consider that the height of one card is 200 pixels. 200 pixels, 200 pixels. The initial position of this first item is at zero pixels. The initial position of the second item is 200 because we assume that the height of this item is 200 pixels. And the position of this item is going to be 400 if I can do simple math. Now knowing their initial position and we can understand how much should we allow the cars to move. The first card should not move more than zero pixels to the top. It should stay here always. The second card should be able to move 200 pixels to the top to get to this position and then stay here and be stacked on top of each other. And the third card should be able to be scrolled 400 pixels and stop here. So as you can see, the amount of translation depends on the initial position. But the initial position, in fact, is can be calculated by multiplying index by the height of one card. This is the simple formula. Index multiplied by the height. And because this is our index zero, the initial position is zero because we multiply zero by 200, index one and indexed two. So in this case, the initial position is going to be index two multiplied by the height of this card, which is 400, which is 200, so we get 400. And that is also the amount of translation that we should allow this car to move to the top in order for it to stop as soon as it reaches the top and stack on top of each other. So let's try this maximum value of translation to clamp it at index multiplied by the height. Let's go here. So the maximum amount of translation here should be minus one multiplied by index multiply by the height, let's say 200. So now it's not gonna be perfect because this height is hard coded for now, but if I scroll, we see that the first item doesn't move at all because its index is zero, so it will not allow it any movement. The second item will move, move, move until it stops, and then the second stops, and then stops, 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 and they this way they stack all on top of each other like this. So we are simply 
limiting how much translation each card will get depending on its position. The closer it is to the top, the less translation it will need until it stops. And the, to the bottom it will have more because it index is going to be more. And yeah, this minus one can be simply put near one of these either minus index or minus 200. It doesn't matter, it's gonna work similar. So now in this case, like as you can see, we're not messing with a scroll Y. We leave a scroll Y to represent how much we are scrolling. We are only transforming how we are calculating the amount of translation needed for every single card in this list. And in order to get the height of a card, we can take it dynamically as well uh, as we saw previously by creating a state variable, card height, set card height equal use state zero. Let's import use state. And when we're rendering this image, we can have this on layout that will give us an event from where we can take the height of this image and set it in our card height state, taking it from event dot uh, native event dot layout dot height. Now, if I'm going to take instead of 200 here that I hard coded, if I'm gonna take card height, in that case, our cards, I think will stack up perfectly, but probably not because I will show you in a second, why not? Let's reload for the on layout to be called. Yeah, they will be still have a bit of overlap. Why? Because we have margin vertical on this image. So five pixels to the top, five, five pixels to the bottom, that's in total 10 pixels. I think we can simply add 10 pixels to the card height when we are setting it here. So now if I reload, and the height is going to take into consideration both the image height and the margin that we have on top and the bottom. And now it will perfectly stack on top of each other. And actually I'm not sure if you want <laughs> them to perfectly stack on top of each other. I'm not sure how Apple Wallet is doing, probably because I don't have so many cards. No, actually it's uh, Apple Wallet is stacking like right on top of each other as I see here, as we build right now. But it's up to you how you want to do it. If you want to leave 10% of visible area on top, what you can do is do card height multiplied by 0 0.9. This way, 10% of, uh, of the previous card is going to be visible. And this way it all collects here. I believe this is a bit risky if you have a lot of, a, lo a lot, a lot of items. So as you can see, the, the stack becomes higher and higher. You might increase it like this. You might limit how many items there are. Like there are a lot of possibilities here, but I'm gonna remove this and let the cards stack exactly on top of each other. Oh, perfect. So this was our stacking git commit minus m stack cards when we scroll up. And the last animation that we have to implement, and this is the most interesting one, is going to be selecting one of these items and displaying it at the top and the rest of the cards we want to put together here on the bottom in also some kind of a stack like this. So this is, uh, this is quite an interesting animation and we're gonna take it step by step. So 
To be able to select one of these items and display it is as active, uh, what we first have to do is keep track of which of the current cards is selected. We're gonna keep track of it in cards list and we are going to use a shared value for that. Let's call it active card index. Use shared value. Let's initialize it with null because by default, no cards is selected. Let's take this shared value and send it to every single card so that from inside the card, when we click on the card itself, we can update which is the current selected active card index. <clears throat> uh, for that I used another gesture detector on top of our animated image. Now I'm thinking I'm not exactly sure what would be the benefit of using a tap gesture detector. Compared to, um, compared to a pressable, let's say. Consider using the gesture API instead. The old API is not actively supported. Tap, yeah, tap, gesture. Oh no, this is like a CA, yeah, I was not looking at the right price. I should look here, tap gesture. So I'm not really sure what's the benefit of using a tap gesture compared to a pressable, but I would believe it's much more performant, but that's just my understanding. Well, it gives you a lot more um, configuration. Like you need to, you, with a tap gesture, you can handle like the, how many pointers, the maximum duration, the delay, the number of taps. Like this is, uh, of course, like if you need this configuration, um, definitely like we need to use a tap gesture. But for a simple like press event, I believe we can still use a pressable. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and use a tap gesture. To handle gestures, as we, s we saw in pre previous, previously, we're going to import from React Native gesture handler Let's import two things, the gesture and the gesture detector. Using gesture, we're going to define this gesture. It's uh, funny how I say gesture, isn't it? Am I saying it correctly? Gesture. <laughs> uh, and we're gonna use a, not a pan, but a tap gesture, just to handle tap events. And now, Having this gesture, we can wrap our animated image in a gesture detector. And let's close it at the end. And let's do gesture equal gesture. Or let's call it simply tap to define like the, what kind of gesture is that. <coughs> So again, like as with all gesture, there are a number of callbacks like on begin, on start, on end. And I think I'm gonna hook into the on end because this is called when the gesture that was recognized finishes. So a tap event, when it finishes, when the user taps, I want to do something on end. Let's do console warn index just to know on which, like if I press here, I see index one. If I press here, index two, index zero, index three. So that means that we are properly uh, handling the gestures and whenever we click on one of the cards, it displays the, the index of that card. So what we should do with that is whenever we press on a card, we need to update the active card index dot value. We need to set it the current index of a card that is being pressed. So if I press here, I want to update the active card index to this one. And, 
and later yeah i'm gonna do that in a moment Uh, now, having um, having the active card index, there are two things that should happen when this hap when we tap on one card. W the card itself that we tap should go to the top, and the rest of them should go to the bottom. So there are two things, like whenever it's the active card, we need to move it to the top. Whenever it's the non-active card, we need to move it to the bottom. That means that we need a way to update this translate Y value. And I said that uh, a derived value cannot be updated. Um, for that reason, our translate Y is no longer going to be a derived value, but is going to be a shared value. Because we, in some cases, we want to update it, um, use shared value. In most cases, is going to depend on the scroll Y when we are scrolling, but when we are currently in an active state, we need to take control of this translate Y of the card. So initially it's going to be zero. Now uh, we lost the possibility to scroll. How can we update the translate Y every time our scroll Y value is changing? For that, we can define an animate, use animated reaction. A use animated reaction is a way for us to hook into the updates of some shared values. And the use animated reaction expects two functions. The first one, in the first one, we should return the value on which we need to react on. So in our case, we need to react on the scroll Y, meaning every time the scroll Y dot value changes, come on, we need to do something. And to do something, that's going to be the second method and is going to have two uh, values current and previous value. And this current and previous value will allow us to compare how much or how did the value that we return here change from the previous time it was called. Well, we only need to update our translate y dot value with, uh, with this clamp scroll y. So basically the way we derived it previously, but this time it's not gonna work with scroll y, but with current. And yes, that should make, I will re update. I was expecting it to work, but it doesn't. Return scroll y dot value. Translate value equal. And it shouldn't be minus current. It should be not current, but minus current because we want to revert. Yes, yes, it works. We want to revert the uh, scroll position, basically. If it's positive scroll, we need to translate on the neg negative side. So now it still works as it was working before but it's not a, our translate y is no longer a derived value, it's a shared value that is being updated with, uh, as, we, uh, as we move, as the scroll y value updates. And here we don't need the previous, and we can even simplify this function to remove return and the brackets and this value is going to be returned right away. This is a bit cleaner. Okay, that is one animation animated reaction that will drive our translate Y. The next event that should change the translate Y is going to be whenever we select one of these cards and it becomes active card. 
So let's create another animated reaction. And this one will look at the active card index dot value. And current and then previous. Uh, yeah, we're in this scenario, we're gonna look at the active card index value. Uh, I'm not sure if in any case it's going, if it will ever be called when the current is equal to previous, but anyway, I'm going to check if current is equal to previous, I don't want to do anything because I want to do something only when this value changes. So I will return here. Otherwise, I'm going to console, console log, change active card changed from, let's say current to uh, previous. No, 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 change from previous to current. Let's look in the console and try to tap on something. Active card changed from null to one. If I do again, active card changed from one to three. If I do again, from three to zero and so on. We see more of them because our animated reaction is inside every single element here. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, another thing that I've, we, we're gonna do now is if I press on the first item, we see that it changed from two to zero. And if I press it again, it will not call it at all. But what I want to do is if I press on the same element again, I want to deselect it. So that's going to happen here in the tap gesture. And we're gonna check if active card index dot value, if it's equal to null, in that case, we are gonna select the value. Otherwise, if it has already a value, I'm going to do value equal to null. And this way, if I click, it goes from null to zero. If I click again, it goes to from zero to null. If I click again, it goes from null to two and so on. That's exactly what we need. In a moment, you're gonna understand like a bit, it's a bit weird because ev we cannot go from one active card to another active card right away. We're gonna go from one active card to no active card and then go back into active card because that's actually how Apple, Apple is working. And it's going to make a bit more sense like when we see the animation working. Um, okay. Okay. Now, our work is to run some animations when the active card index changes. And there will be uh, two cases, or actually three cases. There will be the case where uh, this card becomes active Another card is active, move to the bottom. Let's start with a second and another, um, and another case is going to be uh, the no card selected, move to list view, something like that. So basically here I want to reset it back to a scrollable list. Let's go ahead and start with the last one. The last one is what we want to do is whenever there is an active card, I want to move, um, move the cards to the bottom. So that means that I'll have to update the translate value. 
let's go ahead and take translate y dot value equal to, I don't know, let's start with zero and see what happens. If I press on one of these cards, what happens? Translate y equals zero. Yeah, basically all of them <laughs> come, uh, come together, come at their initial position. If I want to stack all of them at the top, remember how we did the stacking when scrolling. I want to translate the items based on their position, based on their index, multiplied by height, and this way we're gonna stack all of them at the top. So let's start by stacking all of them at the top. That means that we have to translate them using index multiplied by the card height and with negative values because we want to move up. So if I press on one of the cards, they all move to the top. If I press again, if I press again, nothing happens. Because if I press again, we need to handle this situation. But let me not confuse you. I'm going to work with refreshing from time to time just for us to be able to see them, the cards at the top. In our case, when we stack together the cards, I want to make them a little bit visible, like 90% like this. But the thing is that I don't want to stack them at the top of the screen, I want to stack them at the bottom of the screen. So for that, I'm going to simply add to this value the screen height, height, which I don't have yet, but I can take it using the hook use window dimensions. I can take the height, rename it to screen height. And now if I click, all of them are moved to the bottom of the screen, but they are not visible. So I'm gonna add only, let's say half of the screen height. Screen height multiplied by 0 0.5. This way our cards, when stacked together, they move here. So they are stacked at the bottom. Okay, so with this formula, we found out the final position of our translate, but we don't want the cars to jump there. We want them to smoothly move there. So for that, we need uh, uh, to add an animation modifier, uh, such as with spring or with timing. I checked the animations on Apple, uh, uh, application and a with timing animation is what is being used there. So I'm gonna put this final value inside a with timing and this way if I refresh and then click, the cards will simply move to the bottom. Maybe I can even increase here to 0 0.7. If I, <clears throat> if I click, now all of them are moving to the bottom here. Um, let's go ahead and do an if statement here because we kinda mm, handle the animation when uh, to move things to the bottom. Now when we are when no card is active, we want to go back to the scrollable normal list view. So in that situation, our active card index dot value is going to be null. If it's null, we should go back to the normal, to handle the normal scenario. And the normal scenario is going to be also translate, value, we want to go back to the normal position, but also using a with timing in order not to jump, but to slowly move there. And we're gonna move to, uh, I think it's, I think it's going to be this clamp position because this is how we're scrolling. So we need to move back to this one. 
with timing clamp it's not on, it's not only it's not going to be current but it's going to be scroll y dot value and now what's going what's happening and now we should also make sure to put this animation in an else statement because if we are in normal mode, we need to run this animation. If we go into an active mode, we need to run this animation. And if I press again, it moves back. Press again, moves back. And even if I have some scroll and from here I go to this Visa card and go back, it keeps the previous score uh, like this. It keeps the scroll position whenever we are going from one mode to another. Uh, okay, but the thing is that the last step in this animation to make this animation work is to highlight the card, basically to move the card that is being selected to the top of the screen. So in that is going to be the third case and I'm gonna do it here with else if. Uh, and if this active value is equal to the current index, meaning that if this card that we are animating is the card that is being selected, it's going to be this card becomes active. So in this situation, we need to do something. It's not gonna, at the moment, it's simply gonna keep it in the same position, I guess. So if I press on the blue, the green, it keeps in the same position and so on. But what we want to do is simply we want to move it to the top of the screen. So it's gonna be something similar to this one, I believe. But the only thing is that I'm, we're not gonna add the screen height in order for it to simply be at the top. And even no 0 0.9 because we simply want it at the top of the screen. Like this, as simple as that. And now everything works. We can move from one item to a list and the car that we are clicking goes to the top, the rest goes to the bottom. We can go back to the scroll thing and so on. Oh my God, <laughs> looks so good. <clears throat> Perfect, so. Does it make sense? Did I manage to make this animation simple and clear to understand? I hope so. Let me know in the comments. You can play with it on the phone. You can improve it. Mm, I think what I want to improve here, let me check the actual animation. No, it's like this with timing. Maybe the with timing animation, it can also have different um, time. Where is it with timing? It can have different easing, meaning how the time affects the animation. So a linear easing basically will mean that the speed of animation is constant from the beginning to end. In this situation, as we see here in this preview, I think the easing is, this one is also the default, but we can change this easing method to a different, uh, yeah. Easing in out. What I want to do is, yeah, I want to maybe simply start fast and uh, when the animation comes to an end to reduce the, the split speed. 
Please add shadows to the card. Yes, I think I'm gonna add. I, I was looking like, what's, what's not working? Bounce? No, I don't want the bounce. <laughs> Think out is what I'm interested in. Oh my God, there's so, there is so many configuration. So let's simply copy this one and we're gonna pass it to all the width timing, do we want to all of them? At least to the card that is be becoming active. Let's go ahead here and provide options to the width timing. And we're gonna provide the easing and we need to import it from, not from React Native, but make sure to import it from React Reanimated. And you can also change the duration in order to see the effect. So if you change it to one second, you're gonna see that the card slowly goes. But the thing is that it starts fast and it ends a little bit slower. So I'm gonna leave the duration to normal. Doesn't seem to change much, but it's there. <laughs> and you can do the same here to the cards that are moving to the bottom. Just to make sure that it works, maybe we can do something like a jump. No, how is it called? Bounce. What's gonna happen if we bounce it? Hello, Carlos, Carlos Jr. Thank you very much, Carlos. Oh, that, that was something. <laughs> it, definitely not what, what I want. Should I reduce the speed? Because it's too, too fast, maybe, to reduce the duration to half a second. And the same here. Yeah, I think it looks good. Nice, perfect. So that was our animation here. Let me go ahead and do git add, git commit minus m. Active uh, or selected card animation. And someone recommended to add some shadow. Will I be able to add, let's do React Native shadow generator. Come on. And let's try to add it where? On our image here. I'm gonna do it after the transform. Does it have shadow? I think it does. Or maybe I should do it. What's going on with elevation? Maybe I should do it on a view. It's on a view. that wraps around our image. 
let's import this view and let's add shadows on that view. Cannot understand if it added or not. Yeah, on a white background, it's clear that it added the shadows. On the white background, it works pretty well, but when it's on top of each other, probably it still works. Yeah, it still works. And I can change the color here <laughs> to a white. Uh, I don't think a white shadow is like this. No, I don't like the white shadow. Maybe it should be some kind of a purple. <laughs> I'm spending too much time with this shadow. Okay, perfect. And maybe at this moment it's better to add them to a style sheet, not to not to overcomplicate our component. Styles equal style sheet dot create container. And image. So the styles for container, I'm going to take them from here and do styles container. And here from the image, I'm going to take most of the things. I'm going to put them here. These are the static styles, like weave, height, and so on. And I'm going to put them into an array together with the animated styles, styles.image. And the transform, will we will keep it here because it's a dynamic property. And because these two have the same name, I can remove it like this. Maybe I can simplify this as well, like into the same line. Just like that. And even Well, this work? Yeah, it works. So yeah, the component is much cleaner now. It's recommended to use box shadow. Okay, I'm gonna check it out later. I'm not gonna stop it for, for, for this. Um, this live, will it be uploaded to YouTube? Yes, the live will be available on YouTube. Uh, all our live streams are here so yeah you can check it out you can follow at your own pace and also i'm going to make sure to upload the source code so that you can check out the, um, the source code it's going to be available through the assets so make sure to go to assets dot not just the dev slash apple wallet and you're gonna download that bundle as well and before we um, uh, if you have any questions let me know maybe you want us to implement uh, some more features, but I want to say a big thank you to um, Software Mansion team for sponsoring this video. And I want to uh, remind you that on 22nd May to 24th of May, I'm gonna be in Krakow in Poland and, and I would love to meet you as well. 
So if you want to attend Abdo.js conference, which is one of the best conferences for React Native developers, make sure to buy your ticket. Use the Not Just Devs 10 promo code. You can also follow the link in the description for a 10% discount. And let's let's meet in Krakow. All right, guys. So that was it. Thank you very much. Have a nice day, and I'm gonna see you next week. Bye bye.